Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while, but we are now back. This is another edition of Angry Fans, ESPN, Yahoo, Fantasy. We're going all in on football. We're going to go ahead and give you our picks of our mock drafts, let you know how it's going. This is uh, mine and Lord Fish's second mock draft, but we're going to show you and share the results of both drafts. Uh, Lord Fish, how you doing, man? It's been a while. I'm doing good. We both have uh, big life events going on. We've been away for a little bit, but we're getting back into it. Yep, going right back into it, and I'm so excited because, you know, football is getting ready to kick off. You know, Patriots training camp just started today. I don't know if you looked into that, but things are very exciting right now in New England. You know, I, I'm going to call it right now. You know, we're, we're going to win our division. I think that's safe for me to say. I don't know if you have any uh, doubts about that, you know, with the Bills or the Dolphins. You know, there's some drama down in Miami right now with Xavier Howard over there, you know, upset, requesting a trade. Do you think we have a chance to get Xavier Howard? In no, definitely England? not. Definitely, definitely not. not? No? No, nah, I can't That'd be kind of cool, no. though. I won't lie. Uh, but our mock draft's about to start. You know, I'm in at pick number 12. We got Lord Fish at number seven, so I'm very excited to see the results. Uh, were you at number seven in our first draft? I forget. I think I was right around there, probably six or seven. I, I was number 12 in that one, too, so I'm very curious to see how these differ. Uh, I think I'm going to be going for the same people because I do believe with the first mock draft we had, uh, I had a championship winning roster because I do plan on winning the championship in the Angry Fans League. 100% winning all that money. For those who don't know, we're doing a 12-man league PPR, $50 a person. Um, winner gets $550 and the Angry Fans trophy. And then second place, we'll get the money back. You know, we got to, you know, give a little consolation prize. Uh, no punishment because, you know, these guys ain't ready for that. Everybody's scared. Everybody's scared. All right, let's see. We got this guy up first. Who do you think this guy's going to go first? Who should be the consensus first overall pick? Christian McCaffrey. He's really? Even after recovering? Points. Absolutely. Even when he played last year, he put up points. The few games he played. I I'm agree excited. with you, he'll, he'll be one. Dalvin Cook will probably be two. And then it'll be between Derrick Henry and Alvin Kamara. I, I honestly don't know why Zeke is – in the top six for running backs, he's not as good as people think they are. They, I think you're just mad he, he, he hurt you last year. <laughs> no, but even like Josh <laughs> Josh Allen has more rushing touchdowns than Ezekiel Elliott does. Hey, man, once Zeke lost Dak, you know, all things went downhill for him. Uh, it looks like, you know, uh, the draft actually doesn't begin for another minute, 25 seconds. So, you know, we'll get into that. I'm not going to lie to you, man, like with – you know, Michael Thomas t getting his surgery done just recently and, you know, missing majority of the season, even if he does come back, it probably won't be till right before playoffs, like maybe like week 13, week 14. And you already know New Orleans is going to slowly adjust him back in, even if they are a playoff team. I don't think we see much of him. Um, he's not somebody I would draft and even hold on my bench. It doesn't seem worth it to me. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but yeah. Can't guard I mean, Mike as my guy. He's one of my favorite guys. I go after him every year, um, but I'm not going after him this season. I'm not going to lie. I, I think I actually – no, I drafted DeAndre Hopkins in our in our first mock draft. Um, I'm kind of upset to see him not there. But I will say with Mike Thomas not being there and a new quarterback starting for New Orleans, I do think Alvin Kamara will be the go-to guy. So just because of that, I would possibly put him as a top three pick over Derrick Henry. But you don't think there'll be more pressure on Alvin Kamara with Michael Thomas out? No, no, because you got to think about it. either even if it's Jameis Winston or, you know, Taysom Hill, they're going to be, you know, they're not going to go downfield like Taysom Hill. We saw him last year. He went downfield here and there, but I think he's going to be using Alvin Kamara as a safety blanket. I think Alvin Kamara, besides Christian McCaffrey, I do think Alvin Kamara is the a top receiving running running back besides McCaffrey and Saquon yeah. Barkley those are me my top three picks and because Saquon's coming back from an injury I have to put Kamara above him especially since he's been doing this for years and I do think mm -hmm. Kamara has a breakout year I think for running backs I, I would not be surprised if Kamara was a non, number one running back this year if not Dalvin Cook because Dalvin mm -hmm. Cook is also that guy so we got one two three and when Christian McCaffrey Dalvin Cook Derrick Henry the fourth pick just picked Alvin Kamara. Are you surprised by that? 
No, not really. I mean, that's what you expect. You know, those are definitely the top four. Um, Taylor's ranked a little high. Saquon Barkley's ranked seventh. But I feel like you got to get a running back early because it's such a drop off between the good talent and then up the draft. Oh, Zeke just went at number six. I'm going to take Tyreek Hill. Wow. Wide Over receiver reliable. in the first round? Really? I, I took the first wide receiver. He had over 100 receptions last year. He's always reliable, always puts up points. There's still good enough running backs by the time my next pick comes up. I'm not going to lie. Saquon Barkley at the, number eight P, at the number eight pick is, I think, the steal of the draft so far. I'm honestly yeah, but- surprised you did not take Saquon. He's coming off an injured season, you know, so we'll see. He might not be as good as he was before. You never know. All right. I have to play it smart on this pick. It's my pick right now. Um, I'm honestly surprised Austin Eckler was taken. I'm going to have to go, especially with all the uncertainty in Green Bay. I have to go with Jones from Green Bay. Um, And with my back-to-back pick, because, you know, I am number 12 in this one. This is kind of tough, but, it you know, it's kind of easy for me. I'm going to go ahead and take Travis Kelsey. So I'm looking at the picks right now. Like, I'm not too hyped up on Joe Mixon. I'm, I've just never been a fan of his. I'm not – I've never been a fan of any Cincinnati running back. You know, whether it's Giovanni Bernard, Mixon, you know, I never trusted any of them. And I don't really care, you know, if people moved. I know it's just Mixon in Cincinnati now. Giovanni Bernard has moved on, but I still don't trust Mixon. He's an injury-prone guy, and he's never been reliable. Um, maybe uh, as a running back two or a flex option, but Ooh. I wouldn't want him to be my running back one. So I'm up again, and I got between Najee Harris and Edward Tolaire. I'm going to take Najee Harris. Dude's definitely going to be a workhorse in Pittsburgh. I mean, that's Can't a great pick, that. man. Yeah. They've been pushing for him to stop practicing. He's overtraining. So he definitely wants to ex- excel in the NFL. So I'm excited for that. I do see in most drafts, you got Najee Harris at the most common spot at pick 18. Uh, so I do think that was a smart spot. Uh, speaking of rookies, uh, I want to ask you about breakout stars. I do think Najee Harris will be a breakout performer this year, especially since Connor is no longer in Pittsburgh. It's Najee Harris's time to shine. Uh, and Ben Roethlisberger, he looks great coming into camp, man. I don't know if you saw him. He, he's in shape. You know, he's skinny. I think we might get big, a mobile Big Ben again this year, man. Uh, what do you think? You think Pittsburgh's going to have a good offense? You know, a lot of people last year were surprised with Pittsburgh. They thought they were going to be the Super Bowl champs going towards the middle of yeah. the season. You got to remember, they were on a fucking roll. But you got to remember, they also had a soft schedule. So everybody knew, you know, once they hit real competition, they were going to get exposed. But... Do you think I mean, Big Ben got, can carry that team? Because they didn't really have a running game last year. You know, James Conner was hurt for the most part. They didn't. They got a couple good wide receivers over there. Um, they did lose their left tackle. Going to wave us off. We'll definitely see how that turns out. Um, Darren Waller was just taken off the board at 25. So they've already taken out three tight ends. Most of the running backs are taken. The good ones. Montgomery still in there. Dobbins, Sanders. No quarterbacks have been taken yet. I'm honestly surprised no quarterbacks have been taken. What round do you think is the earliest a quarterback should be taken? See, I'm usually high on quarterbacks because I like to get Patrick Mahomes, uh, Russell Wilson, and guys like that. But it's all it's all a guessing game. Once that first person takes off, uh, takes the QB off. It's game over. I agree. Everybody with you. will start panicking. See, I liked. I'm up next, and J.K. Dobbins was just taken before. He was taken at 29. I have pick 31. That was going to be my next pick. Dude just took Patrick Mahomes at pick 30. I I'm not going to lie. I thought you just drafted Patrick Mahomes. I was going to freak out on you. Like really, third round you're going for a quarterback. I understand like fifth round at the earliest, but third is just way too quick. My next pick, at pick 31, I'm going to take Mike Evans. Had over, really? a thousand, had over a 1,000 receiving last year. Had 13 receiving touchdowns. Brady looks good. He looks healthy. 
And last year, Brady supposedly played the season on an MCL tear. So now that he's actually healthy, you know, he might have a better season. I'm not going to lie to you. I've been watching a lot of Brady's, you know, Instagram clips, Twitter. You know, they just got their Super Bowl ceremony rings. You know, they just did all that. He actually shouted out Chris Godwin and said, Chris Godwin's going to have a good year this year. So, And you never really hear Brady say that about his receivers. All the years, you know, he played with Amendola, um, you know, Edelman. We never saw that. So I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to pick the guy opposite on my next pick, and I'm going to pick Chris Godwin. <laughs> Um, besides um, that, moving on, because I'm not going to have another pick for a long time, I'm going to pick somebody who I know is going to get me those points. And you already brought it up earlier about Ezek and how this man had more rushing touchdowns than him. I'm going for the points. I'm picking my man, Josh Allen, in the fourth round. Wow. You drafted a quarterback before I did. Good yes, shot. sir. Yes, sir. And I think that is one for the books. Thank God this is a mock draft. <laughs> <laughs> all right let me hear your team so far you should have four players what do you got i only got three. Oh yeah Tyree, that's right i'm sorry tyree, I had a pick. tyree kill mike evans and Najee harris i'm not gonna lie to you man i'm I'm honestly shocked you have you went back to back wide receivers for your first two pick and then picked Najee harris for your third um so far in into the fourth mm-hmm. round my first pick i got jones out of green bay Number two, I got Travis Kelsey out of, out of Kansas City. Third pick, I got Chris Godwin. And my fourth pick, I have Josh Allen as my quarterback. I'm not going to lie to you. That's points, man. This is a scary team. I, I just took my fourth pick. Um, with the 42nd pick, I took Josh Jacobs. Great pick. 1,000 yard, yard rushing last year. I bet I'll have a better year this year. Probably more receiving yards. So we'll see. Solid number two running back. All right, so let me ask you, man, we're, we're going towards the end of the fourth round, and Julio Jones is still on the board. Are you surprised to see this? No, not really. I mean, he's the 42nd ranked, and we're at pick 44. You know, it's a new system. They got the kid A.J. Brown over there who's doing really good. Then you have Derrick Henry of the offensive line. So, I mean, he's definitely going to put up numbers and stuff because he's had to go back and forth with Calvin Ridley over the past few years, but. We'll see. I mean, there's plenty of good wide receivers left on the board. You got DJ Moore, who's had over the past two seasons with five different quarterbacks. He's had Julio Jones was just taking that pick number 46. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of good wide receivers still up there. So I'm not too shocked. Cooper Cup was just taken. So have DJ Moore, Tyler Lockett, Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen got me a lot of points last year. He was ranked a lot higher. Um, Adam Thielen was just taking it pick 49. All right, let me ask you this, man. Let's let's stick on Minnesota for a second. I know you just brought up Adam Thielen. You know, last year he had 14 touchdowns, and the rookie opposite of him last year, Jefferson, he had seven touchdowns. Who's the number one receiver going forward next year? I gotta say Jefferson. He had an absolute. He had a crazy year last year, and I feel like with another year, with that year of experience under his belt, last year he'll do a lot better. All right, man. Moore was just taken. Going, my, going, my neck. going through the first few rounds, man, are there any picks that surprise you besides your own? Like, uh, just looking at the first round, through the, through the first four rounds, is there anything that shocks you besides, like, you picking Tyree Kill with the number seven pick of the first round or, you know, um, Patrick Mahomes getting I'm drafted just, in the third? I'm just shocked you took a quarterback before I did. <laughs> That's your biggest shock of the draft so far as I took a quarterback. Yeah. So I have two running backs, two wide receivers now. Haven't taken a quarterback yet. Haven't taken a tight end. Right now, I'm going to take one of the supposedly once in a generational talent. He was drafted very high this year. Is I'm it Pitts? Kyle Pitts. Pitts? Okay. Kyle Pitts yep. tight I, I, I kind of figured. I'm not going to lie to you. I was going to take him if he was still there. I was still, I was going to take him. So I just took Kyle Pitts. He's my tight end. He's projected to have a big year, especially with Julio gone. It's just going to be pretty much him, Calvin Ridley. So now that I have five picks, let's look at quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers is back. Herbert. Russell Wilson's still up there. I can't believe Jalen Hurts is ranked so high. He's ranked ahead of Herbert, and he's ranked above Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Ryan Tannenhill. 
And Tannehill's been a great quarterback over these past couple of years. I think I'm at the toughest spot of my draft so far. Kenny Galladay. Oh, we took Odell Beckham. Yeah, I wanted to fill in my wide receiver spot. Here we go. Another quarterback on Dak Prescott. That was going to be my next pick. This kid just took him. Um, I was Russell definitely going to go. I was definitely going to go for Russell Wilson. He's guaranteed points, but unfortunately, he's not there. I feel like Matt Stafford should be ranked higher, which he's not. Um, you know, LA has a very exciting offense, man. I'm honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. I think Matt Stafford will replace Matt Ryan as you know the number one point getter for uh, quarterbacks and fantasy, uh, especially with who he has to throw the ball to. Uh, I would not be surprised if Stafford has a great year and he ends, you know, top five quarterbacks for fantasy. Yeah. I've been talking some serious crap about this dude, but now that he's back, I'm going to take him. Aaron Rodgers is my quarterback. Wow. Wow. I'm not going to lie. I would, I would have expected you to draft Tim Tebow over Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> the man put up great stats last year. I'm sure he'll have another great year. Clearly, his team wants him there. So now that it's confirmed that he is back and he is ready to play, I'm definitely excited that I took him. Right now, looking over my team, I have Aaron Rodgers, Tyreek Hill, Mike Evans, Najee Harris, Josh Jacobs, and Kyle Pitts. I need a flex, a kicker, defense, and I have six bench spots. Yeah, I mean, you definitely have a solid team so far. I can't, I can't disagree or hate on that. Tell me what you know about San Fran's running back, Sermon. What do you know about Trey Sermon? So he's a third-round draft pick. Um, supposedly, a lot of people are hyped up on him. Definitely not on the fantasy side, but a lot of analysts say he's going to have a great year and that he's going to be a decent running back. Javante Williams just got taken. He's going to be balancing back and forth with Melvin Gordon. Unless, like I told you, I saw that with Cam Akers getting hurt, this dude, Daryl Henderson Jr., isn't um, – he's the most productive running back. So, I've seen rumors of Melvin Gordon getting traded to uh, the L.A. I think no matter what offense you put Melvin Gordon with, he'll be a solid running back. Um, yep. He's not somebody I would want as my starter or even my backup, but I would definitely have him in as a flex option. Depending on the week. Took, some kid just took Joe Burrow over Tom Brady, Ryan Tannehill, Matt Stafford, Matt Ryan. Hey, man, Joe Burrow is that guy. You know, when he played for LSU, he, you know, he, he set records. He, this dude was playing Madden out there on rookie. Um, I'm not mad at that. You know, with T. Higgins and them boys over there in Cincy, you know, he has opportunity to flourish. Uh, but we'll see what happens. You know, they, you know, they still don't have an offensive line, so. I don't know if this guy watches football, but <laughs> I would have much rather had Joe Burrow as like a backup, you know, come by week, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't want him as my starter. My next guy I'm going for with my next pick, I'm up in two picks if he doesn't get chosen. Um, I'm a huge, huge fan of Robbie Anderson. I think with him having Sam Darnold back together, they have that chemistry, they have that relationship. He had over a thousand yards last year receiving. I think he will have a great year. I think so that's the will... only thing he has known for him. The fact that they played together in New York, I, I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think that's good for Sam Darnold because, you know, he has a go to wide receiver. I still think DJ Moore is a better DJ. wide receiver. I know, I know. Yeah, without a doubt. But uh, I, Robbie Anderson is a deep threat. Um, and in the last few, in the last couple seasons since Robbie Anderson got there, uh, you know, those two have been neck and neck for fantasy points. I'm pretty sure Rob, Robbie Anderson has, like, uh, outperformed him. But, you know, we'll see what happens moving forward. Yeah, Robbie Anderson was definitely a beast last year. 95 receptions. He had over 1,000 yards receiving. The only downfall is he only had three receiving touchdowns. But, like I said, with him having that connection with Sam Darnold, I feel like those stats will get bumped up a little bit. Tom Brady so, went towards the end of the seventh round. I'm honestly shocked about that. I'm not going to lie. Do you think Gronk performs a lot better this year than he did last year? No. Not at all? I love Gronk. Don't get me wrong, um, but Gronk's fantasy days are behind him. Um, if you want to have him on your team just to make the roster look good, 
cool. But um, I, I think, you know, Gronk's best game last year was in the Super Bowl. And he barely, you know, not hating on Gronk. You know, I love Gronk, but. He only had 45 receptions last year for about 623 yards, but he did have seven touchdowns. Tampa Bay's defense. Yes, sir. I got all the faith in the world in them and them boys. They brought everybody back. They got the young rookies coming in to grind. I, I think they're going to get only better. I, they can only get better. Devin White, Levante, David, the, them dogs. And I did take a defense kind of early, but, you know, I wanted to get a defense while I could. I'm going for points, man. I want them points. See, now that you took a defense. Yeah, yeah. Somebody took, took Washington, Washington, and Washington's defense was crazy last year. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm still kind of upset that Washington's new team name has not been announced, especially after seeing Cleveland in MLB, the Cleveland yeah. Guardians. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that defenses are flying off the board, I will be taking the Baltimore Ravens defense. It's all really? over What defenses were left? Bro, San you Fran. had the Patriots defense available San and you took Fran, Baltimore? Indy. San Fran just got taken. Indy, Kansas City, Denver, Cleveland, and New England. I think people aren't aren't thinking about the fact that everybody in New England is back. Yeah, Patrick Chung retired, but you have pretty much everybody coming back for the defense. I think people are crazy. I actually wanted to take the Patriot defense, but I knew that the Buccaneers had the easier schedule. And they, you know, they just, you know, they're young, up and coming, and you know, they're gonna get me them points. Yeah, but the Ravens always have a solid defense. They yeah, but, you know, up. a huge part of defense and getting points is special teams. And even last year when the Pats weren't that good missing people, they had some of the highest scoring uh, special teams in the league. So uh, I think you're crazy. I would have definitely took the Pats defense. How do you feel about uh, A.J. Dillon? We've seen a lot of hype around him. They project him to have five more. 500 more rushing yards this year. Do you, th do you believe in the hype? Nope. A player can only do so much, man. And it's also about the team that he plays with. And, you know, I, I just don't think he's that he, – I don't think he got it. I'm sorry. There's a reason. You got to also remember I picked Jones for a reason. Jones is a beast. And uh, I do – I think he's going to be a workhorse back. I think it's he's going to have, like, a similar season to, like, Derrick Henry, um, you know, especially with – you know, Aaron Rodgers missing so much time. Yeah, training camp just started and he showed up. I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy they work things out. That's cool. Um, but it's actually not official yet. They still got to pull off a trade to get Randall Cobb. If they don't get Randall Cobb back, we'll see if it actually happens. You got to remember, that was part of the, the, the negotiations they had. Um, how do you think Connor does in Arizona? I don't think he gets much play time, man. If anything, he'll be a solid third round running back. Third down running back, I mean. Uh, but Edmonds is going to be the go-to there. I don't think Connor, – Connor is a solid power back, but third down's it. That's it. Nope. Um, I'm honestly surprised uh, Raheem Mostert is still on the board. Yeah, definitely. I'll take Jarvis and Andrew. He'll be on my bench for the time being. My first bench player that I took. So right now I'm going to go over my team. I have Aaron Rodgers, Tyreek Hill, Mike Evans, Najee Harris, Josh Jacobs, Kyle Pitts, Robbie Anderson at the flex, Baltimore's defense, and Jarvis Landry on my bench. It's a solid team. Wow. The, my guy, my guy Koo was just taken. I was about to draft him. That's wild. I guess I'm going with Buffalo's kicker. I, I had to pick him, man. The fact that Roheem Mostert was still there. We're, we're talking, uh, what, the 10th round, and he was available. Like, I, yeah, I'm glad we have like, him on my bench. He was ranked like 77th. You got him at like 109. That, that's what I'm saying, man. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand why he was there, but, you know, I'm going to take him. All right, so, so far through um, the first 10 rounds, I have Josh Allen, Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay, 
Jones, Fournette, Kelsey, Beckham. I got Buffalo's kicker, Bass, uh, Tampa Bay's defense, and Raheem Mercer starting my bench. I'm, I'm pretty happy with my team so far. I'm not going to lie to you. I just took my kicker. Well, Lutz. Well, Lutz, yeah. Yeah. I so, can guarantee you that guy's going to be kicking a lot of field goals this year. <laughs> so, I got all my starters. I got Jarvis Landry on my bench. I just got to fill up the bench. I get some backups. I'm honestly surprised, man, with Baker Mayfield having such a good year last season, you know, and Odell coming back healthy, that he's still available on the board. Yeah, but Baker only threw, like, I think, 26 TDs. Yeah, but everybody was saying they, you know, they were up for, like, best offense last year. So the fact that he's still there, you know, he's only getting better. I am a little bummed out. Um, there's a lot of hype around CD Land this year. He had a decent year. I mean, decent year last year for a rookie. He had a 74 receptions, 935 yards, and he had five receiving touchdowns. And Dak Prescott only played five games last year, and he still put up those numbers. So I think if Dak's healthy, he's going to have a great year, and he's definitely going to be somebody to watch. I mean, Dak's definitely, you know, going to be in that MVP conversation. I feel like the last couple of years he's been in that conversation. He just barely loses it. Um, you know, this year they have a lot to prove, you know, seeing Jerry Jones get all emotional saying he'll do whatever it takes to win them another Super Bowl. You know, I respect him saying that, you know, after so long, you know, they haven't won since 95. You think people wonder if he's just doing it for the money, or if he really cares, you can finally see the emotion on his face and he really does care. I mean, but I think he proved that, you know, with paying Zeke, um, and Dak, uh, you know, he wants to do everything he can to make everybody happy. Do you think the Cowboys are uh, have a Super Bowl winning team right now, or do you think they're a couple pieces away? Do you think they no. stop to make major moves? They they always show, and their their defense is struggling. They just lost Sean Lee, but they got Michael Parsons. But supposedly he has a lot of off field issues. I don't know how true it is, but hopefully he can. Uh, he's definitely got the raw talent, so hopefully he can stay out of trouble. All right, man. Well, what are you looking for? Let me see it. I just wanted to take James Conner, but he got picked right before me. Um, doing all backups now. Your boy's still on the board. Wide receiver out of Buffalo. Are you going to draft him again this year? I got auto-drafted because I ran out of time. I took Matthew Stafford with my pick. I couldn't choose. I mean, we were talking about Stafford earlier, man. I already said he has the possibility, you know, be becoming a, a you know, top five quarterback this year if, you know, if all the hype is real. Um, worse See, comes to worse. I wouldn't bother. I wouldn't, you know, be upset seeing him as a top 10 quarterback. I don't think it will happen, but, you know, with all the hype, I could see it happening. A lot of people forget about Cole Beasley. You know, he doesn't score a lot of touchdowns, but he gets a lot of receptions. He gets a lot of yards. But there's a whole thing going on right now where they're trying to vaccinate players, and he doesn't want to get vaccinated. So. I was actually just about to ask you about that. Where um, actually the players don't have to be vaccinated. They already announced that, but coaches do. Yeah, but that's why you know you know we have a couple coaches that won't be on the sidelines this year. Um, uh, we're we're not gonna get too much into detail about that, but I do know he's coming out and speaking his mind frequently. Uh, and he's yeah. saying a lot, and a lot of people are getting upset about his comments. How do you feel say, about what he's been saying? I'm, I'm all in the belief that we live in a free country, and it's my body, my choice. Do whatever the fuck you want with your body. If he doesn't want to get vaccinated, he shouldn't get vaccinated. Fuck. <laughs> no, I got my guy. I picked Corey Davis. I am happy, though, that I got Matthew Stafford because – God forbid Aaron Rodgers goes down or something happens or whatever. I have a solid, solid backup. I got a lot of Buffalo players this year. Yeah. But, yeah, quarterback-wise, Kirk Cousins on the board, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Kirk Cousins was just taken. Baker Mayfield, Trevor Lawrence, Daniel Jones, Carson Wentz. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was going to draft Baker there, but I figured – I would rather get, you know, more security on the bench at wide receiver and running back. 
That's why I went for Corey Davis. You know, it's going to be his first year with a rookie quarterback in New York. I think, you know, he it's a good, reliable wide receiver to have as a safety blanket. I think they definitely build a nice chemistry over there. And then Devin Singletary, you know, I feel like he's going to be a solid running back in Buffalo. Um, another solid option off my bench. You know, he's ranked at 110. I got him at pick 133. So I'm, I'm not mad about that whatsoever. Yeah, uh, two two of my my picks that I want have been sitting here the entire time. I'm surprised they're still here. Let's see if they're still there by the time it's my pick. How many picks we have left? Three picks, and there's two took, people left I want. Took Philip Lindsay. You know, Why? new team this year. I need a backup running back just in case. He was one of the best ones left on the board. If I were you, I would have went for Hines. I don't know why you would go for Philip Lindsay. I'm all set with Hines. I had him last year, never really got me enough points. Yeah, one of the one of my picks that I left on the board is a running back. Hunter Henry and John Smith haven't been taking it. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of surprised, honestly. Um who do you think uh between the two, Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry, who do you think becomes our number one option at tight end? Do you think it is Jonu or, or are you going with Smith? See, the Patriots have a good way of divvying up receptions and time between multiple tight ends. But from what I, everything I've heard, Henry's the one that's got – he's been the one practicing with first team, and he's got the go-ahead and everything like that. So, we'll definitely see. But I feel like the Wolves have big years. If Even Cam right now on the board, though, you have Jonu Smith ranked higher than Hunter Henry. Yeah. I'm surprised James White's still on the board. Wow, if this guy falls to me in the next pick, I'm going to freak out. Who do you think the number one wide receiver will be in uh, New England this year? That's tough, man. Everybody keeps saying Jacoby Myers. I mean, it's really up for grabs. Now that Edelman is retired, Edelman wasn't even our number one last year. Like, we didn't even really have a number one. No. In my opinion, we still don't have a number one. Uh, I, I think it will be Joe New Smith and Hunter Henry as our go-to guys. I think, the, you know, our tight ends are going to be our security blankets. I think we're going to have a lot of double tight end sets out there. Um, I do think James White will have a huge year, and that's why I'm shocked he's still on the board right now, you know. But, <laughs> you know, it's up for anybody. Um, if If I had to pick a receiver – I'm going to have to pick Nelson Aguilar. Um, I don't trust the guy. Drops the ball way too much for my taste, but, you know, he did have a great season last year with the Raiders. Um, I think he could have a huge year for us. As long as he played like he did last year, Cam will, you know, have a security blanket or Mac Jones will have a security blanket. Whoever is our quarterback will have him. Um, but I, I think we got plenty of uh, targets. Oh, Hunter Henry just got drafted. Yeah, I took Evan Ingram with my last pick. Wow. So, uh, J.D. McKissick was somebody who I'm surprised has not been gone. You know, he's projected at, you know, uh, 106. So, the fact that he's still sitting there at 156, I, it amazes me. And, you know, I've been talking about this guy nonstop. And James White, I'm going to have to pick him. I am up in four picks. Oh, dude just took who I was going to take. Took my boy Cole Beasley. <laughs> I think I have more running backs than I've ever drafted. Yeah, I have uh, Jones, Leonard Fournette, Mosert, Singletary, J.D. McKissick, and James White. I'm totally fine with those running backs. I can make great trades with these guys. I have depth. Um, they all have different bye weeks. That's amazing. T.Y. Hilton, next pick. Second wide receiver on my bench. I'm sorry, man. I don't trust T.Y. whatsoever. I had him last year on two different fantasy teams, thinking him and Phillip Rivers would have some kind of chemistry. And I don't know what went wrong, man, but he just was not there. I had him. I cuffed him all season, and it was just – I ended up dropping him, like, I want to say, like, week 12, week 13. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm good with that. He's my, he's my fifth wide receiver on my roster. So. He might have to play one week. Oh, Derek Carr was just taken. Cleveland's defense. Buffalo's defense. It looks like a lot of people waited to the very end to draft the defense. 
Yeah, we're definitely uh, a kicker. We was just taking. We're definitely coming up to the end. I mean, I definitely started things with the defenses. I took a defense before anybody. Yep. So check this out. We were talking about this earlier. You were shocked that I took Baltimore's defense. New England's defense is still on the board in the last round. If no one picks them in the next three picks, no, they just defense. got taken. They just got taken. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> I'm honestly shocked. I do think New England's defense will be a top five defense this year, hands down. They will. You can mark my words. We can book it now. We'll New see, England's like, defense will be a top five defense this year. When they play against soft teams, they do great. But like, I don't know. I'll be interested to see with Kyle Van Moy back how they do. Well, Minnesota was just taken. So I got my last pick. I have all my squats filled. I already backups, have a feeling who you're picking. Backups for everything. Backup tight end. This is just a pick to pick. I already know who you're taking. I even get the pick. I I couldn't I couldn't choose. Just, I'm honestly auto, shocked. Auto I thought you were gonna draft Gronkowski. The fact Come that on. Gronk was still sitting there shocked me. Well, I already have two. I have Kyle Pitts, and then I have Evan Ingram, who are both starters. This is wild. This is wild. Well, Gronk didn't even just get drafted, and somebody took a tight end. I think the the consensus is what I was saying earlier, though. I think people know Gronk is not a starting tight end or even a backup tight end in this day and age. Gronk is just a name to have on your team just to have – um, I actually don't have a backup quarterback on my team. Uh, I think it's very easy for me to pick this guy because nobody knows what's going to happen, but I'm going to end this draft with Carson Wentz as my backup quarterback. You know, the sky is the limit with him and Indy. A lot of people think they have a chance to com- compete this year, so I am not mad whatsoever with that. All right, man, let's go through this draft. Let's talk about it. All right. So I'm going to read the first round results and, you know, we'll go round by round. You could tell me if you think this was a good pick, a bad pick, or if you would, you know, change this up and, you know, we could talk about it. I'm going to pull up, uh, you know, other, other drafts and, you know, we'll compare it and uh, see if things are aligned. Uh, but I'm going to start things off uh, in round one at pick one, we have Christian McCaffrey. Me and you both agree. Christian McCaffrey is the number one pick and yeah. number two, we have Dalvin cook. I think we both agree. Dalvin Cook at number two, Derrick Henry three, Alvin Kamara at number four. All great picks. I don't think any either of us are gonna give any pushback on that. This is where things get a little weird for me. Um, I don't agree with it, but they weren't my picks, so I'm not mad because that left the board open for me. Um, you had Taylor and Zeke at five and six. Um what, what are your thoughts on this, man? You know, if you were stuck at the number five spot, seeing who is left on the board, who would have you taken at number five? I mean, Taylor's a great running back, and he had great receiving yards last year. He rushed for over 1,000 yards. Um, they got a new quarterback. They got a new life. So I like that pick. Ezekiel Elliott, I honestly feel, is a second or third round pick. He doesn't even belong in the first round. I'm not a fan of him. I had him last year on my team when Dak Prescott went down. He sucked. It was awful. But Dak's it, back. It was awful. Dak that, is back. Yeah, Dak is back. But how do you know Dak's going to stay healthy? And, like, may, like, Dak likes to throw. So, how do you – like, I just – I'm not a fan of it. Um, I picked Tyree Kill at seven. I feel like, personally, he is the best wide receiver in the game right now. With – all, all Casey has is uh, Hardman. They lost they lost Sammy Watkins. I think they lost somebody else. But it's just him and Travis Kelsey. And then they have Clyde Soler. But I feel like he'll get just as much yards, just as much receptions and touchdowns as he did last year. So, real quick, before we move forward, I just want to say at number five, right, I would have taken Saquon Barkley. The fact that Saquon Barkley was still there for the number eight pick, and I'm surprised you passed up on him, but you just said – you know, in a PPR league, you're taking Tyreek Hill because you think Tyreek Hill is the number one wide receiver. I don't blame you. That's your opinion. But if I'm picking a uh, wide receiver 
in the first round, it's 100% Devontae Adams. The fact that Adams was not taken, especially knowing that Aaron Rodgers is coming back and he led the league in touchdowns last year, it's not even a contest, bro. Like, I love Tyree Kill, but, you know, with them losing Sammy Watkins, you know, you have Hardman over there, you have Kelsey, and then you have you have Hill. You don't really have anybody else to worry about. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, you know, he's still young. Um, he was figured out after week five. You know, no disrespect to him, but I, I don't think they have the weapons anymore. They have a great offensive line, but the wide receivers, I think Hill's easily – the cheetah is no longer the cheetah. I think this year he gets exposed. Um, but once again, this is a mock draft, so there's plenty of time, I, have, I and I can be proved wrong. I, you know, Tyree Kill's a beast. But the fact that Saquon Barkley was still sitting there and before the draft we started and we talked about how Christian McCaffrey is the number one uh, receiving running running back. And then we, we said Saquon Barkley is probably number two, if not Dalvin Cook. Come on, man. I'm shocked you did not take him. The only reason why I didn't take him is because I had picked number 12. Um, but do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? What do you, what do you have to say about that? I mean, clearly I disagree with you. Like, I don't know. I, I just – I mean, I Saquon like was Saquon. taken right after that, number eight. You had number seven, took Hill, Saquon yeah, went number eight. Saquon was hurt last year. Like, let's see him perform this year. Like, I just – Bro, have you not seen the pictures in the, in the film of him? This this guy is – he's working, bro. He's ready. I think he's going to have a breakout year. I think it's going to be amazing. I think Saquon can easily be the number one running back this year, especially, you know, with Jones out there, at quarterback, you know, they got Galladay. You know, things things are looking good. I'm sorry, not Galladay. They have what? Um, do they have Galladay? No, I forget. Um, Was it Jones? Did they pick up Jones? Who did they pick up? They got some rookie. Tony or whatever his name is. They should have traded ahead and got Devonta Smith, but they got beat out by the Eagles. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, let's move on, man. Uh, you have Nick Chubb at number nine. Don't don't sweat that whatsoever. Yep. Stephon Diggs at number 10. I'm, I'm kind of shocked you didn't pick him either. I would have picked Diggs over Tyree Kill. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I'm also surprised you didn't pick um, my guy. You know, I had uh, – Oh, Austin Eckler at number 11. That was, that was fucking weird. You know, I had Eckler last year. I had oh, really? a 12th pick last year. I loved Eckler. I cuffed him, but he got injured. And the fact that, you know, when he came back, he was Hugh Bear's safety blanket. He was his go-to. I think Austin Eckler can have a fucking breakout season this year. A lot of people are him out, though. When he's healthy, he performs. He puts up numbers when he's healthy. Yep, yep. So if he stays healthy, he'll definitely put up a shit ton of numbers. So this is this is where I won the draft. The fact that I was able to pick Jones at number 12 and then Travis Kelsey. How the fuck was Travis Kelsey available at 13? You had the seventh pick. Travis Kelsey is usually going pick three, pick four, um, six, seven, you know, around there. How did you let me get Travis Kelsey at number 13? What, what went through your head when you picked Tyreek Hill? I mean, I don't know. Ty, I personally feel like Ty, Tyreek Hill is the best wide receiver. And they have – it's just him and Kelsey. That's it. And then they got um, Clyde O'Leary or whatever. But, like, I just feel like Tyreek's going to put up numbers. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I feel like he'll have over 100 receptions this year. Last year he had 87, 1,200 1, yards. So, and he had 15 touchdowns. So, we'll see. All right, man, moving down the list, I, I agree with you. Um, the fact that I started off the second round with Travis Kelsey still amazes me. That's To me, that's a surprise and the steal of the draft right there. I'm just going to stick with that for right now. Um, but moving on, you know, at pick 14, Devontae Adams, the fact that he was there and not the first wide receiver off the board, courtesy of you, amazes me. Um, if I didn't believe in drafting a running back in the first round or as soon as possible in the second round, I would have went Travis Kelsey, Devontae Adams. 100% would have been my picks at 12 and 13. But the fact that, you know, I needed a running back, I had to go for it. Um, but after that, you know, you have Gibson at number 15. Um, I think the guy's going to be a stud. I think that was a good pick, solid pick. Um, let's see. Ridley at 16. You know, Julio Jones is no longer there. Ridley has a chance yep. to become the number one target for Matt Ryan and that Atlanta Falcons team. I think that's a steal. Um, I do think he's going to be a number one wide receiver this year for sure. And definitely, you know, a top 10 wide receiver, probably top five by the end of the year. 
uh, as long as he stays healthy. Um, Joe Mixon at 17, I don't trust the guy. I don't trust Joe Mixon. I think that's wild. Um, the fact that you were able to get Najee Harris with the next pick, I think is amazing. I think that's a steal right there. And congratulations yep. to you. Uh, <laughs> it's a mock draft. Uh, <laughs> going after that, George Kittle. Do you think it's weird that George Kittle fell so late? Not really. Um, like I said, when a position is picked, that's when people start freaking out and picking it. So when you took Travis Kelsey in the second round, next guy took that guy. Um, I'm huge on Kyle Pitts, and that's why I picked him. I feel like it was a steal for me to get him in the fifth round. Um, I, I think agree he's with you. Have a Especially with Julio season. being gone, I'm surprised. Yeah, I think he'll have a great season. So he'll definitely be up there with those two. I think part of the reason why you were able to get pitched so early, though, or I mean so late, is because, you know, and we're going to keep going through the second round. Let me just finish this real quick. You have uh, CEH at number 20, AJ Brown at 21, Jefferson at 22, Hopkins at 23, Keenan Allen at 24 to end the second round. But the third round is when things get interesting. We already said two tight ends were taken. I, you know, I took Travis Kelsey at the beginning of the second, and then somebody took George Kittle in the middle of the second. But to begin the third round, somebody took picked Waller, which is a solid pick. I probably would have picked Waller over Kittle, um, just because we know that's Derek Carr's go-to guy. Yeah. Um, I think he'll have a good year. DK Metcalf, twenty-six. Montgomery, twenty-seven. CD Lamb, twenty-eight. Uh, J.K. Dobbins at uh, twenty-nine. This is where things got crazy. Pat Mahomes, 30th overall pick in the third yeah. round. And I think this is where things, you know, started to happen and people panicked. So I do know you like to go for a quarterback early. You know, we said multiple times you were shocked that I picked a QB before you. Um, are you shocked that Mahomes went in the third? Or do you think he should have went earlier? Or do you think he should have went later? No, I feel like every year he goes around pick 30 right around there. So I wasn't too shocked. I was, just, I was just shocked. It was a mock draft. Last year you picked him first. You picked him in the first round. I picked him. No, I didn't pick him first. I picked him like in the third round. And the only reason I did was because the kid before me drafted Lamar Jackson. And I was like, shit, like it's about to happen. Everyone's about to go for a quarterback. Yeah. So I drafted Patrick Mahomes right after that. And clearly it was good because Patrick Mahomes won me a few games. There were games that I was going into Monday night football or I was going to Sunday night football, and I'm like down. Like I was down 70 points. I was down 69 points. And Pat Mahomes had like a crazy game where he threw five touchdowns and got me 70 points. And I yeah, beat yeah. the kid by one point. So I remember there was one game I was beating you by like 80 something points. And he 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 almost won you the game. It's he got crazy. you like 75 points. I still won by like by like six. Um, but yeah, Mahomes is definitely that go-to guy. But yeah, so after Mahomes, I took Mike Evans, which I feel is a solid pick, good pick, good wide receiver there. And then um, in round f- – You keep going. And then in round four, I got my second running back, Josh Jacobs, who's a great running back, who's a workhorse. So I wasn't – you know, I'm not disappointed with my uh, my first four rounds. I felt like they were good. I felt like these guys are going to put up solid numbers. And then we go to round five. Where I get my tight end, I get Kyle Pitts, who's got definitely going to put up numbers. I we'll, feel we'll like see. I think he's going to have a great year. My biggest shock is that I was able, like you said, you brought up the whole thing like Devontae Adams now that Aaron Rodgers is back. I was able to get Aaron Rodgers in round six. So, which is a steal I, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I got Aaron Rodgers after. Russell Wilson was taken off the board. Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray. Um, I picked Josh Allen in the fourth. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. So I definitely feel like Aaron Rodgers is better than Kyler Murray. And Lamar Jackson. All right, so we went through the first five rounds of that draft. I just want to compare that to our last mock draft. So I'm going to just read out our picks. I'm not going to go through the rounds. I'm going to. I'm just going to go through our first couple picks and then we'll talk about where some surprises happened because I want people to get an idea of where people are drafting people because these are two completely different drafts. I can tell you that right now. Okay. So in, in the first round, things stay the same. You have McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, one, two. 
Those those are the consensus one two from what I've been seeing a lot. Um, Derrick Henry went number three, and you know in the, in our the draft that we just had, it went Alvin Kamara then Derrick Henry. So I you know I think I think people are seeing that you know and more people are going for those guys those security blankets. This is where things are get get different. Saquon Barkley went number four in our in our first mock draft. Saquon Barkley fell to number eight in our new one. Uh, obviously, we drafted with completely different people, different mindsets, different opinions. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, once again, we just want to show you those differences. The The same thing that happened, though, is Jonathan Taylor, number five. So yeah. does that shock you? No, not really. Like, like I told you, I felt like um, he's going to put up numbers. He's going to be a good one. Uh, not too surprised about that. All right. Well, here's where things get interesting. At number six, Alvin Kamara. Uh, I don't think Alvin Kamara should far any less than four. Um, no matter what, I think he's a top four running back, if not five at the latest. I mean, once again, McCaffrey, Cook, Henry, Saquon, Barkley. I'm not putting Saquon over Kamara. But I'm do you think it, with with Michael Thomas being out and no Drew Brees this year, do you think it hurts his stock? I, I, I don't. I, I do think things get overwhelmed, you know, like, um, you know, same with Christian McCaffrey last year. Um, you know, he was well, pretty much the only guy. Yeah, things, you know, ended up sucking for Christian McCaffrey because he got hurt, but he was still one of the number one fantasy options, mm-hmm. even with the injury. You know, that's that's what's crazy to think about. You, look you can, at, look, you can look even at, trade an, in, an injured Christian McCaffrey and get a number one pick, uh, a first round pick. Like people aren't going to argue with you about that. People aren't going to veto that trade. They understand why you're doing it. But what, like you get a, like an injured Dak Prescott last year with Zeke and Zeke like sucked. It was just yeah. too much. Well, so, um, you know, interesting enough, we talked about, you know, you picking number seven, and I, I thought it was similar. You actually had the seventh pick in our first draft. Um, and things were a little different in our first draft. You had yep. number seven, but you went with Stefan Dix at number seven. So let me ask you this. What made you change your mind and go from Stefan Dix to Tyree Kill? Because Tyree Kill did go in number eight. I've been seeing a lot of hype around Tyreek Hill. Like, I expect Stefan Diggs to have a monster season like he did last year. Josh Allen's definitely an MVP caliber quarterback. We'll see what happens there, what he can put up for numbers. But for some reason, I've just been thinking about it, and I feel like Tyreek Hill is going to have a better season now that he's the number one wide receiver and they really don't have a solid number two. Like, over in Buffalo, you have Cole Beasley, which a lot of people don't credit, but he gets a lot of receptions. Like they have good options over there or like Josh Allen makes them good options. I feel like it's not the same in Kansas city. Okay. I respect it. So uh, right after that, once again, you had Tyreek Hill, like we said, uh, I had the number nine pick in our last draft and I actually took Zeke at number nine. Um, I think that's a great fucking pick. No, no, no. Zeke should be in the second and third round. Yeah, I just wild. I was so disappointed last year. I just like I told you, Josh Allen has more rushing touchdowns than Ezekiel Elliott does. Like every year, Zeke's hyped up. Every year, and it's just he doesn't deserve it. Hi, he's, man. He's, he really has to prove himself this year. Moving on at number ten, Nick Chubb, uh, Devontae Adams. At number 11, which I am not shocked to see. I Once again, I do think he's a first-round talent, uh, and I'm happy to see somebody took him in the first round in the first draft. Um, and then you got Jones, uh, back-to-back Packers players at number 12. I do think Jones is a solid first-round pick. I took him at number 12 in our draft that we just did, um, and somebody took him in the first one. Uh, and back-to-back drafts, Travis Kelsey, uh, first pick of the second round at number 13. Um, do you do you see this moving forward? Do you think a tight end should not be taken in the first? Or I feel wait? like Travis Kelsey is a different breed because he's one of Mahomes' options, and he had over 100 receptions last year. And, you know, he, he gets a lot of points. So I feel like Kelsey and Kittle are in a different group. Okay, I agree. Uh, after that, you have Cam Akers, who, you know, this was taken – this draft was done – uh, what I want to say two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot's changed since t- in two weeks, and, you know, and that's why we have mock drafts and we do practices. Our draft, our official draft won't be till the Sunday before kickoff. 
um, at 8.30 p.m. We will do a live draft then as well. Um, but Cam Akers at uh, pick number 14. Um, it sucks, dude. He's gone for the season. So, you know, shit happens. But, we, you know, we're not going to spend too much time on this. But do you see anybody else missing the season this year? I don't know. It's early. We haven't even made it through preseason yet. So someone could get hurt in preseason. Someone could get hurt in training camp. We'll see what happens. Hopefully nobody does. I hope I hope everyone stays healthy. Um, last year when Christian McCaffrey went down, there were a few other players. It, it just takes away from fantasy kind of stuff. Oh, man. I, I, the reason why I missed playoffs last year is because I had Austin Eckler, and he, he just screwed me, man. Like – Nobody wanted to trade with me because I talk a lot of shit and uh, the waiver wires, you know, I, I had no luck on the waiver wires. The My biggest godsend last year was Mike Davis. Cause as soon as McCaffrey went down, I immediately picked up Mike Davis knowing he was going to be the go-to guy. Cause they had nobody else. Um, but still like the little bit of points I lost last year, I lost, I want to say like six games by five points or less. Mm-hmm. And Austin Eckler is just that go-to fantasy guy. You know, he was my difference maker because my running back spot is what fucked me last year. Um, and speaking of Austin Eckler, he's number 15 at the next pick right after Cam Akers. And we just saw in the last draft, Austin Eckler was picked really early uh, in the first round. So I do think Austin Eckler is going to be, you know, between the late first round, early second round. I think that's a consensus with him. Um, after that, you have me with DK Metcalf at number 16. I think that's a great pick. Um, Gibson at 17. You picked DeAndre Hopkins in the second round at 18. I think that's a fucking steal. Yep. Dude was a beast last year. Um, and this is where things get interesting. Again, Pat Mahomes picked number 19 in the second round. And, yeah. Uh, people definitely panicked in this first draft as well because, once again, you have a quarterback going early in the second round. That's wild. Um, I know you said you see Pat Mahomes going around 30 every time. Do you think this was too soon for somebody or? No, I mean, everybody has a different, different opinion and stuff like that. I mean, some dude, some dudes would probably put Mahomes in the first round. Which, I mean, that's just craziness, but it's everybody's uh, own choice. When, when we're playing for a big money pot, especially our league, I'm playing straight. I'm not, I'm not playing spicy. I'm playing yeah. straight. I'm trying to win that pot and I'm trying to do it as, smart as possible and I, I will say i do like the dude's pick in the first round he you know he had the sixth pick he picked alvin kamara and in the second round he picked patrick mahomes you know and we'll talk about his third pick but you know i will say he has guaranteed points for a fact those are two guys that can win you a week by themselves and that's just mm-hmm. a fact um so I'm, I'm not mad at that um but moving on you know you have calvin ridley at 20 jefferson at 21 aj brown 22 mixon at 23 Keenan Allen at 24. Now, I've said many times I'm not a fan of Joe Mixon. But I do think getting him at the end of the second round is a steal because he's a guaranteed number one running back who's going to get all the touches. So I will say if you have a chance to get Mixon at the end of the second round, congratulations, you just got a solid pickup. I see a lot of people – last year I saw him go like I want to say eighth pick, which I thought was insane. But some people believe they need to have a running back right away. Um, So that's good for them. Uh, moving on, you know, in the third round, you have uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, J.K. Dobbins, George Kittle at number 27, Sanders, um, Allen Robinson, Najee Harris at pick 30. Um, you picked Josh Allen in the middle of the third round, and I think that's because you saw somebody pick Patrick Mahomes Patrick, early yep. in the second. That's exactly right. So, uh, so I think I'm seeing a trend with you. So you see somebody take something uh, that nobody else is going for, and you immediately jump to it because you're worried. Well, I mean, I feel like quarterbacks, like it, with every position in the NFL, there's like only a certain top elite. Like you look at the top five tight ends, top five running backs, top five quarterbacks, and like it's huge if you miss out on some of those dudes. It can really affect your team. So, yeah, when I saw Pat Mahomes get picked, third round i took josh Allen. now if you were going to give advice to the listeners who are watching you know seeing what we're talking about would you suggest doing what you do what taking a quarterback early if you see somebody take a quarterback in the first round you immediately jump to one in the second round you know based off what i'm hearing you say 
if you see like Pat Mahomes going the first, you're going for somebody big in the second or the third. So luckily I've, I've done a lot of mock drafts this year, which I never do. So I've seen how a lot of people have drafted where their head's at. So I've gotten better with my drafting due to the ability to mock draft. I feel like, like in that first draft we did, I held out on running back so long and I got snipped. I got nipped every Every round where I thought I was going to take a run. You did. Your first draft was terrible. It was, it was absolutely round. terrible. <laughs> I got like some some dude that's a backup for my second run back, which is just awful, but I just panicked. Now doing so many drafts, I see how people think, and I know when it's the right time to take somebody. So I'm definitely excited for our draft this year. Oh, no, no quarterbacks are taken. It's your pick. You finally want to go for a quarterback. What is the round you're going for a quarterback? Let me hear it. Pat Mahomes, if Josh Mahomes, Allen, everybody's still on the board. The latest I could late, I could wait. If Pat Mahomes isn't taken by the fourth round, I'm taking. So fourth round, that's when you're going for that number one quarterback. Yeah. If Pat Mahomes still isn't taken, that's when I'm taking. I'm not going to lie to you. I think fourth round is as early as you should go. Um, the latest you should wait for a quarterback is the seventh round. Um, usually that's when I get my quarterback, the seventh to eighth round. I'm not going to lie. If you go back and look at all my old drafts where I go for money and I usually get a guaranteed point, go getter. Um, most seasons, Matt Ryan is my quarterback. Um, I'm not going for Matt Ryan this year. Uh, if it's not Matt Ryan, it usually was Tom Brady. I usually always have Tom Brady, but last year I didn't have Tom Brady. I was pretty pissed off. Those are actually my two quarterbacks every year, Matt Ryan, Tom Brady. Last year I had Matt Ryan, and um, I don't know who my backup was. I think I had Baker Mayfield as my backup. I know you had Justin Hubert. Um, yeah, but I also and, had Pat Mahomes. So and you had Pat Hubert Mahomes, which is that was, that's a great two quarterback. Camp. You actually had – I'm honestly, you had like four quarterbacks on your team. You were a douchebag last year. So people you were hoarding didn't out. Trade with, people <laughs> didn't want to trade with me. Like he said earlier, like you talk shit in our league and then people veto our trades. Like I had this thing set up where I was going to get, I think, Carson. And it was a solid trade for my team and the dude I was trying to trade with. But because I talk so much shit in our league, everyone's like, Oh, don't trade. Like, that's a bad trade for you. Fucking <laughs> bullshit. Two grown men acting like babies. Hey, man. It happens, man. That's what happens when you talk shit. Talk shit, get hit. So, you don't get hit physically. You get hit mentally. I'm, I'm coming back <laughs> this year to talk even more shit and draft a better team. So be ready for that. I will say, uh, because there will be no punishment in our league, um, I will put my beard on the line again. Um, so I will make a side bet with you right now. I don't know if you want to start growing out your beard. Uh, we can, cause mine's been going out for a while right now. It's not even clean. You know, this is all like masked up. I had to wear my mask at work today. So it's all condensed, but if I do not make the playoffs, I'll make the bet with you right now. If I don't make the playoffs, I will shave my beard, baby face, no mustache, no yeah. nothing. I, we got to think something else for me because I always shave my beard like every two weeks. I want you to go full skinhead. No, that's the hair. That's way too much. That's a fair that's, trade off. That's, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> no way. I want you to go full skinhead. No, Blue I'm not shape. fucking doing that. That's insane. I can't Are do that. Are you backing out of our first bet? You're really going to do this? I'll do something else. I'll, I'd rather wear a fucking dress than shave my head like that. All right. So if you don't make the playoffs, you have to wear a dress in heels. And walk around my mall. You have to do a full no, lap not, around I'm the not, mall. A full lap around I'm the mall. I'm not doing heels. I'd rather just wear a dress. It's fucking crazy. All right. So if you're not going to wear heels, you got to wear a dress with makeup and a purse. No, definitely not makeup <laughs> and shit. That's not going to over. You got to put on the wig. <laughs> no, no. We'll figure something out. We'll think of something. All right, man. All right. Well, this has been fun. You know, I'm ha I'm happy, happy and hyped up that we're talking about fantasy football. You know, tomorrow we have the NBA draft coming up. We're going to go into full draft mode on that one. I'm excited about that. Um, we're going to do more fantasy football shows moving forward. This one was just a fun mock draft. We just wanted, you know, get some ideas of what was going, you know, get our practice in and also share our thoughts with you guys. 
you know, once again, angry fans is going to be a go-to spot for fantasy. You know, you're going to see the top picks come up on your screen right now. We're just chilling. We both just got engaged and, you know, enjoying, you know, coming back from vacations. Um, but yeah, moving forward, angry fans will be your go-to spot. We will help you win that championship or I will help you win your championship. You're going to see this lady over here wearing a dress one day. Uh, until then, I'm your host, Afro. It's been fun. Peace.